welcome to Your Real, Your Ideal podcast. And today, Sandy, how are you? I'm great. I've got no complaints at all, Amy. Good. How are you? Good. Good. Things are going well here in Omaha. And today we're going to talk a little bit about goodbyes. And when we had this as a topic, I was texting Sandy and I'm like, what are we talking about? <laughs> we're talking about goodbye. Are we saying goodbye to friends? Are we saying goodbye to to towns? Are we saying goodbye you know, through death? You know, what are our jobs? What are we saying goodbye to? And Sandy is like, we're going to say goodbye to all of it. <laughs> so, we're doing it. I loved it. I was like, all right, here we go. So this topic is pretty timely because um, we just experienced a death in our family and it was due to Alzheimer's. So it was a, a very, it wasn't unexpected. It, it, it's been a long time coming to um, this moment. And um, so my father-in-law passed away from Alzheimer's, uh, I guess, right after Thanksgiving. So you know, coming together now in the time of COVID and trying to determine how to say goodbye because it was a little bit of a, uh, how do we say goodbye to him? And, and my daughter put it in such sweet terms because she was like, you know, we've been saying goodbye to pieces of you over the last 10 years. Oh, and that's I, beautiful. I know. Isn't that sweet? Cause I thought the same, when I read it, I just started crying. Cause I was like, isn't that the truth? It's been a journey of saying goodbye to him. And so this right. moment um, wasn't unexpected, uh, but it's still hard. It's still hard to say goodbye. So Amy, question for you, because what I was thinking about when you said uh, how you were saying goodbye, and did you say it was Reagan who said yes. who made the... Yeah, she did that. Yeah. The thought that went through my mind is because saying goodbye is two-sided. The person who's leaving, and in this case, it's the people who are staying, right? right? Was he able to say goodbye? Because when you add Alzheimer's or when people are suddenly taken, now here we're talking, when we're saying goodbye, we're talking about death and mortality. Yeah. Was, was he able to say goodbye in bits too, as his Alzheimer's was kicking in? Was there a reality to that for him? Did you feel like he was able to say goodbye or does that not matter? Uh, you know what? That's a really good question. I cannot recall a time where he said, um, said goodbye. It, it, I mean, as, apart from us just leaving him at that moment and saying goodbye, but just uh, um, having that conversation of, um, you know, he took it, he had a very funny approach to him losing his memories. Um, you know, he would joke about it in the beginning when he was still aware, he knew what was happening and he would, so we didn't really get serious with him about it and saying goodbye. Um, it was more just in the moment, having conversations, asking him about things and just hearing stories and, and, you know, he would joke, well, I could tell you anything and it could be different tomorrow. <laughs> so That's awesome. it was pretty funny, you know? He was, he was kind of a lighthearted kind of guy. So anyway, that's a so good question. I think it was more one-sided through the journey, really and seriously, because it was us knowing that we were losing pieces of him. Do you think, Amy, too, the question that came up to me, and this is for our whole discussion, all kinds, some people do not like to say goodbye. They don't want to. And some people have a huge need to say goodbye, whether it is, you know, oh. uh, I, I I have, and this isn't, you know, we're talking about in death, but I would tell you yeah. that I have this huge habit of when, let's say a family reunion is going to be done. I'm with people that I really care about that I have to, I feel like I have to dictate the next time we meet. So my goodbye, so that way I'm not saying goodbye. Right, I'm right. making plans <laughs> for the next time. Okay. And right. I think that's why the death part, I really like a lot of goodbyes. Like I, there's no such thing as, because I know there's a finality to it, but I know of other people where they're like, they'd like to sneak out the door. They, they want nothing to do with any of this, you know, yeah. and that, that's just their way. And it sounds like your father-in-law, his way was humor. And yeah. he probably didn't want a big party or a good, big goodbye. It was bits and pieces, but he probably did it just in his own way of knowing yeah. every time he shared life, he was sharing, you know, who knows what tomorrow's going to bring, right? Right, right. I think he was very aware of that. Yeah, it's, it was definitely a journey. 
But, you know, the flip side of that is my father passed away suddenly and unexpectedly 16 years ago. And there was no goodbye. It was just a boom. And that, so the differences between these two experiences, now it was my father-in-law versus my father. It was unexpected versus expected. Um, but night and day experiences emotionally, physically, um, because I kept thinking, it's very interesting. I kept thinking, okay, when was the last time I talked to my dad? What did I say? Did I tell him I loved him? Did I tell him goodbye? You know what I mean? It was like a, and it started to make me, uh, well, here, I'll tell you a story about yeah, tell the story. <laughs> right after. So my dad passed away in October. And so Thanksgiving was following and we were with Tom's family for Thanksgiving and had a great weekend. It was kind of emotional for me, but it was good to be around family. And they started leaving, that people started going home and we were saying goodbye to people. And I think we might've been staying an extra day or something. I just remember someone leaving and I was an emotional wreck. Like I said goodbye to them, I hugged them and I went into the house and I was crying. And Tom was like, are you okay? And I was like, you know what? We don't know if we're ever going to see them again. Something could happen immediately. And we, so we, we could lose them immediately. And that stuck with me that I need to make sure I'm getting things in and I'm saying goodbye, or I'm just making the most of all time. That stuck with me for about a year. Like I was like very intense about making sure every interaction was a, you know, walked away feeling like, okay, I haven't left anything undone. <laughs> right. Right. Because that was the baggage that came from you because of the need. So you're a person who has a high need to say goodbye. Do you think? I, yes. I would say in now. Meaningful at, relationships. At, at this you went point through in that. my life. Yes. At, because I went through that, I think it's, that is now important to me. The connection is really important to me. The means and what is goodbye is a different communication. And maybe now that you shared the story, have I ever lost anybody like that, that would make me really truly realize that tomorrow I might not see them again. Probably not, you know, probably not. You know, my goodbyes are always until next time. And when's our next time? And when it comes to death, um, it's more aging. You know, my aging grandparents, there was no shockers with any of them. Watching my parents, there's a lot, you know, back when we talked about aging with dignity, there's a lot with that. The, the, the people that were lost suddenly were, I mean, they were, there was one friend that was a close friend um, that made it real, but a lot of times it was one person removed, right? Right, right. And I think mortality becomes, well, it's very real. If it's a, a spouse, a parent, a child, but we, we tend to not really understand mortality or care as much at, when we're in those middle years. You know, it's just, it's, you're just living day by day, right? You're, right. you're living, moving, and mortality is just so out there, right? Because we're not, it doesn't happen that often when you're, it's just, it's really the shock and the unexpected ones that happen when you're in your 20s and 30s and even starting to go into your 40s. But now that we're in our 50s, it is a real thing. Well, and the other thing is, if it's not in your immediate circle, so it's not someone that you is daily in your life, daily in your thoughts, um, you can kind of forget about it. Does that make sense? Like, right. um, like we had a friend a couple of years ago who passed away unexpectedly, and I can go for days without thinking about that because he wasn't part of my daily life. Now, when I see a photo of his wife and children, it's like, oh, and it's like, oh, I remember that, you know? So right. um, I think there's a big difference in how you approach saying goodbye to people who, um, you know, you don't see all the time versus someone you see every single day. And I think saying, I, 
I always get back to, so there's a really good book and I added it, you know, we're doing for the listeners. We did um, in the last podcast, we had a great discussion on thanks for the feedback, which is a book. And we're going to be doing another one in early February on chasing the bright side. And um, one book that I, I started a list for Amy and I, as we have these random thoughts, which they happen that we can put books out there that we think would be good discussion books, but one's called being mortal by Atul Gawande. Gawande and, um, Anybody who reads it, it's one of my, I, I tell you, it might be my favorite book of all times. And you would think it's about dying because it's about mortality, being mortal. And I would argue that it's a book on living because too often we focus on the dying part. And it really, it re, what this book emphasizes is the importance of living before you die. So I, I like to say it's a book about living. And yeah. so saying that, as I thought about, us talking about saying goodbye. Now, again, we're starting with mortality and there's other, you know, again, we're going to, we're going to take this to, uh, we're starting with the big stuff, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <That'd be> but, <laughs> but back to the goodbyes, I am so, it probably started with being mortal and then with working in the primary care clinic and setting that, the, the big startup up that really had to do with chronically ill people. So mortality I am so impassioned with living when you're in your final years or mortality is not just, I'm going to get hit by a car, my plane's going to go down, but it's really there looking people straight in the face every day. And the saying goodbye is important, but what's even more important is living every day. And, and to me, that's saying, saying goodbye is this extended, you know, saying goodbye is living a great life and goodbye might start with the first the day you meet somebody meaningful or the first day you're born. It's a long goodbye. And right. my big thing right now with my parents who are extremely healthy, and I'm, I'm careful in saying this because I don't want to make it sound like, oh my gosh, my parents are on their deathbed. They're not, but they're, they're mortal and they're going to die right. and they're older. And yeah. my big thing, and it, it, what, when I'm looking at my next year, one thing I'm really bucky about is my time. And I could there's all these initiatives. I've got all these people who want my time and, oh, we're going to build the next best thing. And, you know, you're going to make a bunch of money. And all I can think about is I want to enjoy my parents while they're still living and not show up when they're dying. Okay. Does that make sense? Like right now we have loads of fun together and we do all kinds of fun things. And you always show up when they're dying. Right. But do we always take the time and hesitate and say, do I want to, you know, am I doing my goodbye while they're living? Are we doing that? Let's go. They've got a convertible. Let's go to the grocery store, the convertible down rather than just trying to make them comfortable. So my big mission is, and I've been talking about this, but I haven't COVID happened. That's one of the reasons I wanted to move where I moved is so I could be closer to my parents because I want to be with them while they're living and not just when they're dying. Right. And that's my goodbye. My goodbye is let's have some fun. And I'm going to be more bucky and intentional with my time. And even with those people, we're all mortal, right? And so just like in his book, he Atul talks about a lot of it's aging, but then there's also somebody got a, he's a doctor. Somebody got a very bad disease. They have a horrible quality of life. And he focuses on the living, whereas we live in a society where we tend to focus on the dying and yeah. staying alive and the beating mortality. And the beating mortality usually is counterintuitive to living because usually it's a really bad quality of life. And so right. I'm trying to use his words. I don't have anyone with a chronic illness, what have you, but I'm trying to get be ahead of the, the, I'm trying to be ahead a little bit. And I think my point is, and being reiterated by what, what you're going through in the reminder with your father-in-law is I want to extend my goodbye and make it you know, it's the goodbye that, that, that ends when it ends, but we're going to have some fun along the way. And it isn't just a moment of time. Right. I think it's also keeping in mind how you want to be remembered. And yes. so do you want to be remembered as someone who wasn't living? Who, so I have a friend who told me a story one time about her mom and her mom is alive and well, but she was like, we were chatting and she's like, oh my gosh, I remember growing up and I remember my mom cleaning the toilets. So, and I was sitting there thinking, 
oh my gosh, I do not want my children to remember me cleaning the toilets. Like that was like a flash of, all right, so what kind of memories am I creating for my children so they don't think that I'm obsessively like cleaning the toilets cleaning, is really like, your favorite thing to do. Exactly. Or just cleaning in general. Or, you know, what are the interactions that I'm having that they're going to have? Um, and it's not always going to be positive, but they're going to have uh, those memories. You know, there's going to be times when I have to clean a toilet, but I don't want it to be like, oh, I remember my mom always cleaning toilets and be right. like, that's not what I want my kids to remember. You know, um, I love that point. And I think going back to like with my mom, she told me that she, she's a big uh, genealogist and she really wants to get her, she has this huge fear. It's not of dying. It's that she's not going to get all of her, all of her stuff done because there's so much. And yeah. so me helping her and us having fun along the way, that's, she wants this done and it's fun uh -huh. and just spending time together, you know, it's a great thing. And if anything, there's a handoff because she knows if something were to happen, what a better goodbye than that, right? Right. And, and I'm again, sure you're hearing <laughs> stories along the way. Right. That yeah. she's, she's carrying that down to me. And I, I, I think too, like some of my, my top values, which, you know, again, some people would be like, really, those are her top values, but uh, fun friends are right up there. I love adventures. And it's so easy to keep doing what you're doing. Oh, the toilets need to be clean. Oh gosh, I got hired for another job. I'm going to overwork myself. But what that does, it's the squeeze play. It takes away from the fun and the, and I do like spontaneity. I, I like, I like a nice mix between spontaneity, spontaneity and structure. I tell you 50, 50. Yeah. And, but you got to have the time to do that. And one thing, you know, you talk about what being, what to be remembered for. Uh, my middle son, Ben called me today and he couldn't wait to tell me about how Grant, the baby was in town. And keep in mind with my kids, a big thing I do with them is I, uh, we have a, a joke, not a joke. I, I take them on magical mystery bus tours and that's been, you know, throw them in the car and we go on an adventure. We might go oh, to the fun. candy store. They try to guess where we're going. And it's become so popular that um, nieces, nephews, people, they know that Sandy, if I'm going to give them a gift, it's a magical mystery bus tour. We might have five stops, mysterious. You might have a gift at everyone. Um, when Ben graduated from college, I gave him a magical, from, he, from Durango, a magical mystery bus tour. His dad was thrown in, friends were thrown in, loved it. You know, they all, everybody sent me videos, but he couldn't wait to call me yesterday. Grant was in town. Well, he didn't tell his dad Grant was in town. And we didn't realize it had been a year and a half since Grant's been in Omaha. Because, you know, I'm in Durango. I've seen him. You, you just kind of forget where they've been right. with two households. Well, he didn't tell his dad. And Ben planned out the mystery and the surprise. And I love those kinds of things that he couldn't wait to call and tell me about exactly what he mapped out, how his dad didn't recognize Grant right away because he was in the middle of a bunch of friends and Grant's like, what about me? And how they laughed and, and, and Scott <laughs> told it. everybody, my baby's here. But, but my point in all of that was he didn't call and say, oh mom, I'm cleaning the toilets and I thought of you. You know, he yeah, called right, to say, right. mom, <laughs> guess what? I pulled off yeah. this huge surprise and you'd be so proud of me because this is so you mom. And right. that made me happy. Not because I wasn't there and I didn't need to be there, but you know, it was that it's something he related to me and that he realized that that's something I love and part of me and something fun. And it wasn't cleaning the toilets. And it's a good gift. You gave them a really good gift of right. whenever they do it, even after you're gone, that's going to be a memory that you have. Um, you know, I, I have that with my dad. I'm going to show you. If you, anybody's watching the video, I know some of you listen. I have this Cowboys coffee mug. And when he passed away suddenly, he and I had this rivalry. He was a big Cowboys fan and I'm a big Chiefs fan. So we had this whole rivalry. We were constantly every season, you know, going back and forth. So, um, and so I took this mug after he passed away when my mom was like, is there anything you want? And that's the one thing I grabbed because he drank out of it all the time. And I have it sitting up on my shelf. So every morning when I get you coffee, see I see it. And you know, this is 16 years later, but it's still a little like, oh, it just makes me feel good. And football season's here and I still don't root for the Cowboys. <laughs> but, but anyway, I have the little mug. So Amy, do you think this gets back to both of us are sentimental, right? We're bringing up these sentimental things. Do only sentimental people like to say goodbye? 
do you have to have that sentimental side? Do you know, is goodbye imp more important to people that are sentimental or do we just, or is it B, we say our goodbyes and we look at it a different way? You know what, that's a good question. I think for me, my wanting to say goodbyes comes from experience because I'm just gonna say, um, I remember leaving a job and I was 23, 24, well, maybe I was 25 and I'm leaving this job and I was going to another job and the other job was great. I was going to get paid more. It was closer to my house. It was a huge opportunity. I was really excited, but I really liked the people I worked with at my previous job and it was a really good company. And, um, the plant manager came to my desk at when I was leaving like the day before I left. Okay. And I, like I had been avoiding saying goodbye to people because I just didn't want to deal with it. I'm like, I can't, this is too hard. Like, and, and then it started doubting me, started doubting my decision. Right. And he, but he came to my desk and he started talking to me, asking me some questions and, and I started crying. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, just get me out of here. <laughs> so, and, and then I'm going to say my second job, I kind of snuck away too, like, because I was pregnant and I had a baby and I was kind of deciding, am I going back? Am I not going back? And so I didn't say goodbye to anybody because I was like, I'm just going to assume I'm coming back. And then I decided not to go back. So I literally never said goodbye to anybody there. I wrote a few Isn't notes. Isn't that interesting that we don't, because I don't like people to make a big thing over me saying goodbye, right. but I like to make a big deal about them. Okay. Am I allowed to say I'm having a hot flash and I have to take my sweatshirt off? Yeah, I'm, right right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I like can't that. take it. Oh, thank you, everybody. And I, my brother gave me this USC shirt. It's a little big, but that's okay. Oh, nice. Um, but but back to when I left Lux, I was there for 22 years, you know, huge friendships. And I told the managing partner, I do not want a big going away party. I No, right. I want no foof. Even when he announced it to everybody, it's like this big, blah, blah, blah. It's not that big of a deal. I said, you're all be fine. You're all be good. You know, right, we'll, right. we'll have lunch. I didn't want it to be a goodbye. I wanted it to be, well, we'll stay in touch. Like I, I'm with you, Amy. I did not want that. Um, yeah. And I do think, like back to when we talked about gratitude, goodbye versus gratitude. I like this. If I feel something, I, I'm I, I want to tell people, and maybe part of that too is you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And some of those, not that the word goodbye, but being able to share. Part of saying goodbye is sharing what you feel. So if I constantly share what I feel, and I'm open minded about that, that whole goodbye thing. I have no regrets because I've shared what I felt and gave them. They knew, they knew those things. I didn't just keep them in. And that's right. probably my way of doing it. I, I vividly remember, and I'm sorry, my brother, Mark, I hope he's not listening to this. Um, he, <laughs> just because I don't mean it bad, but yeah, yeah. I, you know, you don't remember those moments in time. It's how we both felt about it. Cause this gets back to the goodbyes. Uh, we were very close to my, we were close to all of our grandparents, but the, uh, my, maternal grandparents um my great grandfather died in the summer and um my brother had worked on the farm was very close to them but he has always lived way far away post graduation he lived in uh Arizona he lived in Florida and he lived in Vegas so you know he would come and they didn't travel a lot cuz his wife was in law school his first wife i mean they were just busy right. so he he didn't come back a lot you know what those years are like. Again, no judgy. It's just the way it was. Young right. kids. Yeah. Um, I lived two hours away. So, you know, I drive back always forever holiday. It wasn't that far away. I would make the trip when my kids were little, I'd make the trip. But here's what I remember. When my grandfather died, we were so sad because we were so close to him. And my brother called me from Las Vegas and I was, and this is maybe part of be careful what you say, because not everybody gets the same goodbyes. And I said, you know what? I will miss grandpa, but I have no regrets. I said, I saw him all the time. I was just there, blah, blah, blah. And my brother burst into tears. And I thought, oh my God, I said the wrong thing because he didn't feel like he got his goodbyes. And whereas I felt like I had no regrets, he had regrets. 
So my point in saying the story isn't to stir up feelings and saying, well, I saw my grandparents and he didn't, but it was a big realization for me that not everybody does get to say goodbye. And that's a hard thing. And it's right. for him, it was a regret that he shouldn't have. My grandfather would have told him, you, I, you know, you called me on the phone. You did. I never mm -hmm. thought of either way, but he didn't get that uh, goodbye. And I wasn't there at the deathbed. I did not actually tell my grandpa goodbye because it did come. He was very sick, but we thought he had months left. So the death was actually a shock. And yeah. other than the kids that were there, we didn't say goodbye, but I didn't have regrets because the goodbye was ongoing right it's ongoing yeah but we do need to think about that not everybody has that and be sensitive to that too right so i found this article i think that's a really good point and i'm just going to say everybody needs something different from their goodbye and so we can't judge different people for what they need and what they don't need like tom's family going through it they all needed something different at the end that's a great and they point. had to come to a compromise of what they were going to do um because his mom wanted one thing he wanted one thing you know they all uh, so everybody deals with it different and so you can't judge people and there's no right or wrong you just have to honor as much as you can everybody who's right. participating so i found this article about saying goodbye and it's actually about moving but as i was thinking through it it could be leaving a job it could be right. you know someone who's uh, is sick and not going to be with us longer um, but one of the things and when you were talking about your job you kind of touched on this don't rush your goodbyes so this can be a process, you know, you start like, don't save it everything for the going away party as you're walking out the door. You can start saying goodbyes a month before, two months before, and, you know, and possibly um, until next time, kind of goodbyes, you know? <laughs> right, right. I like that. Yeah. So don't rush it because if you rush it, then also the, what I've experienced, if you rush all your goodbyes, you're going to miss something like you're going to be, you're going to be cramming so much in at the end that you're going to miss something that you wanted to say, what something you wanted to do. So if you have the process, then, um, uh, and our one on ones and back to process, I think that gets away from the crowd. Here's my words to everyone versus being able to personally touch, extending it is you can get the personal touches in for the ones that have the most impact. And then, then by the time you say the group goodbye, you know, nobody, <laughs> there are the other ones that just, you didn't have as close a relationship. They just started working there, but you're able to make it a little bit more personal too. Right. Right. One of the other tips was use objects as special memory bonds. So I, that's one of the reasons I pulled my dad's coffee yeah. mug out is and so i'm not a huge fan of stuff but you can have key things in your life that trigger memories and having them together all the time and i was thinking about so you know i could be moving away from omaha at some point and that's on my mind and somebody uh for my 50th birthday gave me a omaha plaque and i have it on my bar and i see it every day and i love it it's very cute and um, the, every time I see that, I think of her, and then I think of the group that she's part of that's part of my friendship group. And so to me, that's gonna be something I'm gonna keep that's gonna tie me to them and to tie me to Omaha. I and love that. Great. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna grab something. Hold on, I gotta show you something. Show I was gonna help. say, I'm sure you have things too. <laughs> so what's funny is keep in mind Garrett and I, we actually drove to my parents from Durango because uh, they're, my brother dog sat the dog while we were, I don't, maybe Amy and I were talking about this first, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm still in Arizona. I'm at my brother's house right now taping, visiting my parents and I'm staying on until Tuesday, I'm flying back, but we drove here. We had some work to do in Phoenix, but Garrett laughs at me because of the things I pack. So here is, do you see this? It says, is it backwards? Merry no, Christmas. Good. It says Merry Christmas Wagners. Wagners. It's a little cross stitch and one of the things uh, I did for and so it has a little and in the bottom because my mom is so neat so it has all my little gratitude part of my advent calendar but my mom has in it grandma Gibb which is my paternal grandmother made this in the late 1970s 
and it was part of our Christmas decorations at our house. But one of the things I'm doing, even while we're so busy with all this work, my kids want money this year. I don't have many gifts to buy. So I did, I have a little advent calendar with a gnome. And yeah. every day I write a, a gratitude journal. I write one gratitude, my gratitude journal. And I have a little notebook that has thoughts for the day. And I have one for each one. And I'm going to take them out on Christmas and reread all of them. And I put them in my little thing. And I buy myself a gift um, for the advent calendar, which Garrett thinks is funny too. But back to your mug. This is a little piece of my grandma. And I think about back to gratitude. There's something about, we talked about child play and when you're young. And even though we're doing all these big people work things and you know we're taking care of his dad, this not only is a reminder of my love and my time with my grandma and that she was really good at sewing and cross stitch, but it kind of brings me back to that, the childlike mentality of appreciation and of what is, valued and those moments in time and so I love that you know you back to stuff it's like why are you keeping your grandma's jelly jar you know but yeah. it's 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 the symbolism of it and the reminders of that goodbye that that stays because a goodbye is one thing, but there are other ways and reminders that what you had with that person stays with you. And sometimes we need little reminders because we're these gooey humans that tend to get caught up in the day to day I and forget that. about the big picture. Yeah. And to balance that conversation about hanging on to stuff, you know, I've met people who have basements full of stuff from their grandmother because, right. you know, they, they closed out the house and they just couldn't get rid of everything. So, but the, that stuff in their basement has no meaning because there's so much of it. It's just this weight and this over it down. Yeah. So having that one thing or that those two little things, that's where, um, you know, that concept of less is more comes into play because like this coffee mug, this is all I have. And it's like, this is so valuable to me. <laughs> It's like, actually, Reagan, when she was home over Thanksgiving, she was drinking out of it. And I'm like, you're drinking out of my dad's mug. I was like, you're I was doing like that. Saying, you better be careful. <laughs> but Amy, I love, and that's a great tip from you, the expert, um, having all this, it's nice to narrow it down. And I did that when I moved out of Omaha. And I'm like, okay, this one's sentimental. I'm not going to keep everything, but I'm going to keep this from my grandma. And the funny thing is now that I'm getting older, I get this whole thing because I'm getting it from my mom about how um, she starts moving things out of hers because she thinks if I die, everybody's going to throw this stuff away. They're not going to know what it's for, right? If it's a few things, you're going to know because I'm going to know, oh my gosh, mom has this of my grandma's. It comes to me. But there are certain things I'm starting to do that, like I have this grandmother loved to quilt and sew. I noticed one of my cousins, um, me and my cousins, one of her daughters just got a sewing machine and loves to sew. And I thought, okay, why don't I take, I've got, I had from my grandmother, the little, oh, she had made a boot that she put her scissors in and her pin and her whole thing. And I'm like, this is perfect. Give it to her. They'll know it. That one small thing. They're not getting a box of grandma's stuff. I'm going to send it to him with a note, a picture of grandma sewing, you know, like a little, and let her take that and keep that part. And it's not just what it is. It's the story behind it, the grandma memories. And my cousin remembers grandma sewing for us, sitting at the sewing machine, having her quilting things up. And that will stay with the family, but it, it doesn't need to stay in my closet as another thing. I'm going to keep a few of my mementos, but to pass those on. Lucille Ball, I listened to an uh, uh, audio book from Lucia Ball and she, Amy, you'll love this. She would go through fits of going through all of her closets because she had this huge hang up about if your closets were full of stuff, it was just sitting there doing nothing. And she thought that was so wasteful. And so she would get all of her, you know, her house staff and she refused to have, her closets were basically empty. Other than like the coat, if you weren't grabbing it and using it, it was not to be in a closet because why did you have it? And she had this whole mentality of minimalism back in the 60s, right? Wow, that's impressive. She was the so original look, minimalist. <laughs> so when I see a closet full, I'm like, what's it doing in here? You know, like it, that funny little trigger of Lucille Ball going through her house and her staff saying, I guess we're going to, you know, she's going to make sure everything in the closets are moving and nothing's stacked up. Um, right. But I love that. So um, one of these tips in this article is pinpoint what exactly you'll miss. Ooh, and, okay. 
I liked that because, um, so when we're thinking about leaving a job or saying goodbye to friends, you know, it's typically not going to be, it's going to be lunch, you know, having lunch with your coworkers or, um, you know, what exactly are you going to miss? And even about a person, you know, when I think about uh, Tom's dad, you know, I think about what I, I'm going to miss. And I'm just going to say, I haven't seen him for two years prior to this because he just wasn't able to get out of the nursing home. So um, for me, I'd already identified what I missed. You know, I was already missing it. I was already missing it. So, uh, but going through these goodbyes, if you identify exactly what you're going to miss, then you can kind of take a step forward and honor that ahead of time and be sure you're celebrating it. So I'm going to take that strand and go beyond death and mortality, but let's go to the friends that you leave. Let's mm -hmm. just use my situation of moving and work relationships. Sometimes I think we have a tendency to not pinpoint what we're going to miss and just continue relationships just to continue them. And maybe there is a time to say goodbye and not, and by pinpointing what you're going to miss also helps extrapolate how you're going to continue the relationship. And if you are, you know, maybe it's just a Christmas card, but I think sometimes I fall into that. I'm going to keep this going and I'm just adding more people to my circle without thoughtfully doing it. Um, Omaha, leaving Omaha eventually. Yes. Did, do I miss a lot of friends for happy hour? Absolutely. Okay. Since I've pinpointed which I didn't even know I was doing, but that was the biggest thing I missed. Sure, we'll get together when I come back in town, but does that mean I have to text them on an every holiday, that I have to check in on them every time? Because that's a lot of things to maintain, but pinpointing, hey, they're great friends to have conversation with, but then I have other friends that I miss deeply, and when you said pinpoint yesterday, my little gratitude that went in here, and mm -hmm. I think of two of my closest friends that I ran with three times a week. And I thought this, and when you said pinpoint and I put this aside, it's the, 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 the thought for the day was a true friend overlooks your broken fence to admire your flowers. And that's what I always appreciate about them is I talk too much. I jump to, I, I do all these things wrong, but they always admire my flowers and they don't say that my broken fence is not broken. Right? right. I don't know how to put it, but that's right. back to pinpointing. They, they like you anyway. But these are the same ones that we do a group text. Anything good or bad happens in our life. We're still, even though those two are still talking about it, I'm still in the conversation because I think we've pinpointed what we miss about each other. Yeah. And we try to keep it as much as we can because it's meaningful to us. So Maybe I'm following this article when it comes to that. You're Sometimes doing really a good job. I, I, yeah, that's good. <laughs> all right. So nice. I love that. Great example. Way to tie that all together. Wasn't well, um, that funny that that was just yesterday too? I know that is. Serendipity. <laughs> Serendipity. You would, you would think we were preparing for this. <laughs> right. And by the way, look what came up. And it's like, oh, Amy, you did researching. Tell me more. And just so everyone knows, it's always kind of fun because I'm hearing it for the first time. Well, we're pretty careful about not over talking about it before we talk because then it is, it's more fun and engaging and authentic because we haven't yeah. already talked it all out. We wait to talk right. it all out on here. Yeah, there's no script for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's an outline, but no script. Yeah. And that so we, we, usually we, follow half of the, we usually follow half of the outline. Honestly. I know, exactly. It's <laughs> like, oh, yeah, okay. Um, so this one was kind of sweet. Don't be embarrassed that you're sad, but don't let yourself stay there forever. Okay. So I thought this was nice because, um, because it talks a little bit about places and things um, that you could also be saying goodbye to, like if you're moving away. And if you're sad about the margaritas at your favorite restaurant, that, it's right. okay to be sad about that. Don't but, be embarrassed. And don't be embarrassed about it. And, and don't stay in that spot forever because if you move to a new town, and none of the margaritas are just as good, then you're staying in that spot. And so you right. need to like move on and say, all right, I need to just stop mourning the old margaritas. 
<laughs> Which is so funny, because can I tell you that Garrett was mar uh, very much mourning the Roja Margaritas when we went to Boise. <laughs> we never did. We kept trying to find the Mexican restaurant. We found a few that were close, but I mean, he would be so gratefully disappointed. He's like, they don't have it here. I'm not coming yeah. back here again. Or, yeah, he grieved that. So it's funny yeah. that you bring that up. Right, right, right. Well, I'm kind of like that with mojitos. Like I've had some some good mojitos in my life and I mourn them every time I get a bad mojito. <laughs> like I want that mojito that I had before. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> but so and then don't be embarrassed. Like hopefully Garrett's not embarrassed that he <laughs> mourns the margaritas. But um, you know, it's, it's okay. I we, like that. And we're all different on what we're um what we what we uh what we're attached to. Like right. one of the things I think about, like my father-in-law, I had a, he came and stayed with us when he was still like Tom's, he was, he was kind of getting harder, uh, like somebody needed to be with him all the time, uh, just for his safety. And um, so we brought him to Omaha for a couple of weeks. They live in St. Louis and just to give his mom a break, Tom's mom a break. And so I scheduled my time to make sure I had some time to spend with him so Tom could also keep working. So it was kind of us sharing the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And one day I took him to the zoo and it was just me and him. And I'd always taken my kids to the zoo. I'd seen it through little kids' eyes. And here was this upper 60s year old man and he was like a little kid. And so to me, that is one of the memories I love that. that I love of, I have pictures of the two of us selfies in front of the animals and pictures of him pointing to signs because he was enamored with all the animals and everything. I was like, that was my favorite time. And it was just me and him. So that was kind of one of those, uh, my favorite Tom moments that I am not embarrassed about because I, I look forward. I actually really, uh, when I go to Omaha, one of the things that's on my list is I can't wait to go back to the zoo. But as an adult, I'd actually go by myself and just walk around. Yeah. But I think Ben would go with me. You know, I think I could con somebody. But again, from eyes, it's, it's a great point that goes back to the point on what was the exact point that you just read? I want to, I don't want to get the words wrong. Um, don't, well, it was kind of, don't forget to say goodbye to places and things. And then don't be embarrassed that you're sad and kind of tying all that together. Tying that all together. But yeah. Uh, yeah, looking through adult eyes and doing things differently. Everybody kind of has their thing and you never know where you're going to find your joy and you shouldn't be. Isn't it funny that Garrett mourns the margaritas and I mourn the house? <laughs> that's kind of funny that is kind of funny it is true though I never thought of it that way all the aha moments we have right Amy I have one question that's going through my mind is so what happens if you weren't able to say goodbye before someone's gone somebody leaves the country somebody a lot of times it's death because you can't send a text or an email then what what happens that because some a lot of times goodbye is as much for the person who's saying it than the person who's leaving. So what if you didn't have that opportunity? What if that didn't happen? What what how do you get past that? Because I can think of a couple like my brother would be a good example where in his mind he didn't get the goodbye that he wanted. I remember a lady that I used to uh, house sit for and I was too busy and I she, we ended up having a deep relationship friendship. And she would wave to me outside of her door, but I didn't make time to visit her and I, and she died. And I really regretted not taking time. And I, don't know, I had a hard time getting through that. So how do you say goodbye when the person's gone? How do you get through that? How do you do you replace that? And I know you're not a counselor and a therapist. But I know. I'm like, wait, wow, Sandy, that's a good question. <laughs> Maybe we <laughs> Why are you asking me that? <laughs> Sometimes we talk through it and we come up with a good answer. Yeah, you know, that's a good question because that's kind of what happened when my dad passed away. And um, I, for me in that situation, it was a year of moments, a year of memories, like a, lot, a lot of conversations with my, my mom was having a hard time with it. My sister, so, and my brother, we were all having, so we were kind of in it together. So I guess maybe mm -hmm. finding that that community and 
And I, so what I remember of that year that followed also was my children kept me focused. So I remember looking to them to keep me focused and not in this place of mourning the whole year. Cause I could have probably, if I would have been alone in that, I probably could have been hunkered down for a year and just been in a bad state. But my, my children, I had to get them ready in the morning, get them off to school. I had to, to like, I had to keep moving forward for them. But I do remember having that community of my siblings and my mom to help me process it. Like we were in it together. So that's awesome. I, I don't know the right answer to that. And I'm guessing everybody's different. You know? I like your moments because if I, I'll use my brother as the example is the more we reassured him because he was actually grandpa's favorite and <laughs> that, that love was there for a reason. And if we went back to the moment in time and all the time and how he spent all the time working on the farm when we were out in the swimming pool, you know, he had all those moments. So I like your moments and the moments in time and the fact that, you know, grandpa didn't lay on his deathbed and say, where's Mark to say goodbye to me? You know, he, right. He, he relived those moments and probably quiet times when nobody else was around and that was reassuring and then I'd say for me you know I was kind of a pain in the butt you know being a, a, a selfish high school kid and I should have stopped and said hi to her when she was waving to me out the window and I had guilt that went with that but we had a there's a reason we had a wonderful relationship and I'll never know if she thought what a little b that girl turned out to be or whether she thought oh she's just busy i can't say what she thought i can't do that but what i can do is i can forgive myself and right. know that when i was present i was present for her we had a great we had a great things but that's i i think i had to get to the point of forgiving myself and learning from it you know and i because you can't i have no idea what she was thinking or what she did because not everything has a perfect ending right 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 all right. I, you know, I love where this conversation is going, Sandy, and what we've talked about, because it's saying goodbye, whether you're moving, you're leaving a job, or, or somebody's leaving us uh, because of death. I mean, I think these are such, we're constantly saying goodbye. And so, um, but one of the questions we had for this was, do you fear death? What are your thoughts? I don't. Garrett had just asked me this. He, he He's very much back to uh, the sentimental. He's not sentimental. And he can be, you know, what I want to say. He's not overly sentimental about everything. Like he would never in a million years keep something like this. But with, when we all had COVID and his dad was extremely fatigued and making comments, you know, about, gosh, I don't know if I'm going to get through this. We were sitting, we were having a board meeting in the hot tub, Garrett and I, and he's like, are you afraid to die? You know, and I'm, and he's like, I, you know, cause we were talking about death and mortality as it relates to COVID and I don't want to die. Okay. I love to live. I love every bit of living, but I tell you, I'm not afraid to die, but that's not my desire. Does that make sense? And he's not at all. He's like, you know what I live. And it's a, by talking about it, I think it's a reinforcement of living your best life every day, as cliche as that is. That's the best we can do because we have no idea what tomorrow means. But I'm not, I'm not afraid. Yeah. I think I was when I was younger, but I'm not now. I agree. I was when I was younger. I, there's a moment in time that sticks out to me. Uh, Reagan was maybe one year old. So she was our only child. And I uh, had a bad test result, um, like a bad pap smear or something like that. I can't remember. But, but, and I had to go in for some further testing. And that, that shook me. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, I have a one-year-old. What if something's wrong? I had never had a bad test result. So it was kind of like a, a, like where I had to go for further testing and everything turned out fine. Like there was nothing wrong with me, but I just remember weeping in that moment. And I wasn't really scared for me. I was sad for her and for Tom. Like I was like, what if I left them right now? Like that, that's what made me really 
sad. And I'm going to say now having young adult children, I feel like I've made my mark on them. I so get that. That makes so much sense. And so I don't really have that fear anymore. I'm like, you know, they got a lot of me. <laughs> so. it's, it is a fear about what you leave behind. Because for me, it's like, I don't think, I think I'd hate to die before my parents. That would be hard for them. And I hate to leave Garrett. You know, it, it's what you leave behind. We have all these, I, I have a friend whose husband suddenly passed away. They were in their 60s when he was very, very healthy. He was running on the beach. And he yeah. suddenly passed away. And she said, and I sent her an email because she was in California and I, I she part of my investment group. And she said, we, we had so many plans. You know, we had all these yeah. plans. We just bought this house. We had all these plans. I thought that feels like Garrett and I, we have all, all these plans and it's who you leave behind. And I, when I yeah. see how sad she was, it's like, that's how Garrett would be. But I'm with you and the kids. It was when we would keep updating the wills and who's going to take care of them and what if the plane goes down and you know, all those things, those things are gone, you know, Hey, they've got their dad, you know, they the, 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 the chances of their dad and I dying together are very much less because we're not traveling together. Right. right. <laughs> uh, but, but, but they're young adults. You made their mark. We've gotten this far. So there is something, there's a huge thing to be said for that. Yeah. I think that's a little bit less weight. It would still be hard, but it's less weight. But I think everybody, we have to be realists. There, there's very few people who have absolutely no fear of dying, right? Because nobody's done it before that we know of. Nobody's come back and said, oh, you know, what? it's not a big deal. It's really okay. It's, right. you know, we, know, we have no point of reference because right. <laughs> nobody's giving us any feedback, right? So there, there's maybe fear is not the word, but there's going to be, um, yeah, and, uh, uh, not even anxiety. I don't know. Maybe fear is the right word. Yeah, but we're less okay. fearful. Are we less fearful? I don't feel like I'm fearful. Yeah, I don't feel fearful. Uh, I think when I think of pinpointing the things I'd miss, that might be where I would start getting emotional. Like, you know, when I start thinking of a future that I couldn't be a part of and the things right. I might miss. Right. Uh, that's probably where, I don't know that it would be fear, but it would be a lot of sadness. And yeah. I think the, the good thing back to uh, focus, don't focus on the dying, but focus on the living because that's one yeah. thing we can control, right? Right, right. completely. Back that's to right. being mortal. One thing we all have in common is we're mortal and we have no idea when it's going to come and how, but the one thing we can almost fully control is how we live our days. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, final discussion question is, what's the real in these situations and what's the ideal? There's I always going to be goodbyes. And there's always going to be goodbyes. Every day we could be saying goodbye. And, and there are goodbyes, even, you know, getting back past death there, we have goodbyes all the time. Yeah. Other people move in and out of our lives. I mean, Amy, there's even goodbyes in, uh, think about when our kids have moved from grade school to high school. And now we don't see yeah. that community. We, we say goodbye to communities. You know, remember when we had our last kid that left Wenceslas? There, there are, you know, there are mixed emotions there. But at the end, we're saying goodbye to a, an era. Uh, yeah. Well, and I even think about moving from our last house. And even our, all of our houses saying goodbye to the neighbors. Right. Like, we've moved three times in Omaha and, or two times, once, two, and then into two other houses. But, um, you know, we had these circles that we lived in, that we were close and that we were, we were a tight knit group. And then we would move out of that circle and we, you know, it was like, I'm only saying goodbye. I'm only moving a few miles away. But really and seriously, we kind of lost those circles because, um, so I probably should have said better goodbyes knowing that um, uh, we weren't going to be seeing them every single day. We have good intentions, but you move into a new community and there's only so much time. Because I think too, right. Amy, I look back and maybe it's Facebook or something and it becomes very evident to me that these, you know, because I don't like to say goodbye, just like you don't like to say goodbye, but the reality is sometimes it does happen. And right. I guess we had our last hurrahs together, but we want to say, okay, we'll see you next week. And right. the reality <laughs> of that happening is not very real. So that maybe that's what's not real. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> well, I, and that's, I think that's part of the ideal is identifying that you, you need to say goodbye, like, because, and you need to know that things aren't going to continue to be the same. So if you're leaving a job, all of those relationships, you do need to say goodbye because the, the relationships right. are going to shift. They're not going to be the same. Neighborhoods, um, even like uh, if you're moving out of town, your friendships aren't going to be the same. You know, all that stuff is going to be shifting and changing. So there is a piece that you do have to say goodbye to. I would say that's the ideal. Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to wrap up here with our next week is Christmas. So this is our wrap question. Right. Okay, good. I can hear you now. <laughs> good. So what we're, not, Christmas? New we're not techie, uh, friend. We're more not than an hour. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's on your Christmas list? Well, I've been giving myself, again, the running joke is with my Advent camp calendar, I've had a gift every day. And we <laughs> went to Costco, that. which is the small things in life. When we were in Phoenix, we were like two kids in a kid. We're going to go to Costco because we don't have a Costco <laughs> close. And uh, I had wanted a robe for the hot tub because no robe. And it is not funny when you do move what goes with you and what doesn't. Uh -huh. So I said, Garrett, put it under the Christmas tree. Um, you know, uh, we also talked about ordering a heater by the hot tub now that it's getting cold. You know, one of those like the restaurant heaters that you oh, can yeah. put your towels and things warm with it. Oh, uh, nice. But That's I've gotten all my gifts to myself uh, this year, everything <laughs> from puzzles to books to fireball shots to uh, gingerbread maker. You know, like all those little Walgreens <laughs> is a heaven. I got monogram socks. You know, I'm, I'm playing mother to myself this year. All those years. I love it. Think about all those years, Amy, that we bought all the little stuff for our kids. I have uh -huh. none of that. Even my stepson, I'm like, what do you want for Christmas? He's like, let me think about it. Money. Everyone's money. money I, I get it. And I'm like, fine, I'll buy all these gifts for myself this year. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Um, I put a, a cast iron skillet on my list. Really? I told them, um, I said, that's like the one thing I want because I have a lot of recipes that require sauteing and then you put it into the oven in the pan. Yep. And and I don't have that pan. Like I don't have the the thing that I would saute and then stick the whole thing in the oven. So I'm like, I really want one of those. And I, Tom, you have to appreciate him because he was like, is that okay that I get you that? <laughs> I'm like, like, that's the one thing I want. I'm like, he's like, you're not going to hold that against me if that's the thing I get you. Because <laughs> nope. he's very careful about making sure he doesn't get me household items like, like, you know, like a vacuum cleaner or something like that so um it was kind of cute but yeah I'm like that's on my list that's it oh and some new wine glasses I think oh I like I that oh I did get um I went to one of our local stores and one of the gifts I got myself was a really it was the shorter it's actually not a wine glass oh, yeah I like to put little mixed drinks in with uh the decorative glass nice <laughs> I, I'm going to say my list is kind of COVID related. Like I'm cooking more and I'm drinking more. So I need wine glasses and a cast iron skillet. <laughs> drinking reading was on mine. I did get oh, yeah. Obama's new book and it, 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 I didn't look at the font, but Garrett was looking for audiobooks when he drives back tomorrow because I'm flying later. Right. Uh -huh. And he's like, what about the Obama book? And I looked and it's like 28 hours. I'm like, Ooh, that's going to be a long read. If it's 28 hours in audio, that's going to yeah. take, 28 hours to read it. Right, right, right. That's a good one. Oh, good. All right. Well, that's all we have for today. Thanks for this conversation. This was kind of a deep saying goodbye conversation, but I think it's a good one to have. And everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy whatever your happy is. Enjoy it with family and hold on to the memories. Yes. Yes. And give everyone a hug if you can. <laughs> if you Bye, can. Bye, everybody. All right.